So there comes a point when we as individuals realize that we are part of the planetary Ajna Center. This is a natural stage in our human evolution. It just comes with our growing soul consciousness. And then this philosophical concept of being part of a greater whole turns into an energetic reality, which is not always very pleasant. We become sensitive to our nation as an organism, as a living being. And we start to, to become more consciously affected by the dynamics of this collective. We are always affected, but now more consciously and therefore often more painfully. We feel the tension that is within this entity. We feel the pull of the unintegrated parts. So we can say that once our eye is opened, once our antenna is sensitized, there's no going back. We are just exposed to this huge collective force, many collective forces, dynamics at play. To stand in this tension as individuals is often overwhelming. We can feel vulnerable and helpless and futile. And in many ways, this is true. Collective forces can really not be handled by individuals, but we have to do this as a group. So to become part of a group seems the natural next step. Without this, it, our life will be more difficult to continue because of this sensitivity that we will not be able to, um, to close down again. A group, and especially one that is integrated and spiritually aligned, can provide us with energetic help and protection, can be as a buffer, um, yeah. In a group of trained observers, which is also trained in harmlessness, we can share our impressions in a safe environment, especially at this time now on our planet with this social distancing, with the polarization that is everywhere in all groups, in all families. Um, this is so healing and so strengthening and so needed. And to stand as a group in the stream of the soul of a nation makes us more resilient to its glamours and to, to the pain. And sometimes this can feel like the only island of safety and sanity for some of us. So it's really good to be together in this work. Yeah, and so in, on our evolutionary journey, we find ourselves taking up this new function. Mm, and this Ajna Center, whether it's on the individual or the national or the planetary level, has a dual function. 
It's both a receiving and a distributing agent. It's an observer and it's a director of energies. This way it's kind of a mediator. And we participate in it when we are focused in our own Ajna center. Or here we can make a, um, a distinction, something a bit more precise. Uh, we actually do this work from the center of the head. It's this midway point, this synthetic center that uh, DK calls the center where land and water and air meet. It's of course a place in consciousness and it lies between the concrete and the abstract mind. Let's just take a moment to locate this this focus in ourselves, try it out. So let us very lightly um, connect with the center of our skull, an imaginary point between the ears and between the root of the nose and the back of the skull. This is roughly the area of the brain cavity between the two hemispheres of the brain. Let's just take a moment to try out this place. And get a sense of this specific flavor of consciousness. And we will get back to it later in our meditation. Okay. On the planetary scale, the planetary Ajna holds the midway point between hierarchy and humanity. And of course, it's the new group of world servers as a whole. And this planetary Ajna is in process of awakening. So we are in process of awakening to this function we are like a relay station. We receive insights and energies from above and transmit them below. We have this other very beautiful mantra from the Glamour book, which is used in the dissipation of glamour. Radiance are we and power. We stand forever with our hands outstretched, linking the heavens and the earth the inner world of meaning and the outer world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. So this is this midway point and in our national work, our midway point is our pinnacle between the national soul and the national personality. We stand above the national clouds, so to speak, in detachment and in the, in the clear light of the soul. And from this safe, footing from this platform on the pinnacle, we can dare to look downwards into the collective consciousness 
without being pulled into the mists. We see clearly, and from there we project shafts of light downwards through the clouds into the collective consciousness of our nation. So it's this receiving and distributing again. Of course, this work with the collective entity is in the pioneering stages and it will take a lot of practice and perseverance. In our last webinar, we did a first general overview observation. And today we will focus in on the mental field of our nation, giving it a little bit more detail. Yeah, of course, in our present global situation, all national mental fields are in turbulence. And it's difficult to keep our own mental field calm enough at this time for such an observation. But now, today, in the Vesak Aura, and in the presence of each other and our elders, we might be able to discern some of the dynamics within the mental field of our nation. So let us do now our meditation, try it out. And as we already said last time, for the beginning, it is good to refrain um, from forming our impressions into concrete thoughts. Let it stay on the level of, of sensing, remaining loose and receptive and uh, leaving the interpretations for later. Keep the mind, the concrete mind on, on a shorter leash that keeps us free to yeah, to notice the more subtle, that which is not yet known and give space for the, for the unexpected. Okay, so we will just very experimentally, experientially, almost playfully uh, have a look at the mental substance and dynamics of our nation from our respective pinnacles. And after the meditation, we can share our impressions. And again, like uh, last time, we suggest that you have pen and paper ready for this observation. Um, it can be very helpful to to just jot down impressions as they come. That keeps our head free for more without the worry that we won't remember 